the show. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Huh. Um, so there's so many things we need to talk about. There's especially this new record on the way called Vespertine. And um, I, I'd say we, we start the show with uh, your new video for Hidden Place. Um, where has it been filmed? Who did it? I did it with uh, two friends of mine who have never done videos before. Uh, they, they are photographers, very uh, well respected, I guess, called Ines and Fenut. And they did it also with a guy called Michael and Matthias. So, so uh, it was an, sort of an experiment between the five of us to, to uh, do this one. So that means that uh, all the five of you, you had the idea and you basically um, co-directed it? No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, but I'm always involved with uh, the idea of the videos, but it's more, I look at myself more as a link between the song and the, uh, and the video. Mm -hmm. So I'd say we watch it. Yep. Here comes Björk. Okay. Und jetzt ist ja diese neue Platte auf dem Weg, Vespertin. Und äh, das bedeutet ja so viel wie in der Nacht blühen und gedeihen, also so quasi eine Umschreibung für Nachtschattengewächs. Um, now, I'm hope that I'm correct. Uh, the meaning of, of Vespertin, uh, it describes things that are uh, blooming and flourishing during the night or in the evening. Yeah, it's also things that happen in the twilight. Uh -huh. So it's, it's uh, a winter album. It's about being uh, inside on the winter on your own and it's snowing outside and you're very happy and you're drinking cocoa and you're reading your favorite book and then you write a song. So does that mean that um, this is a private record for you or was it just the circumstances that were private? I think th it's pretty introvert. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, very much about the home, uh, domestic things. It's a love affair to the home but also a love affair to the laptop. Oh, <laughs> which are two different things basically, because the laptop is basically to take it out on the road, and uh, so but, that. But also a tool to make, you can create a home everywhere you are. Home is where the heart is. That's what people say. Home is where the laptop is. <laughs> <laughs> so both the laptop and the heart. So what was this place in particular? Was it mostly Iceland, or was it other places where you created the record? It was uh, in Spain, in Denmark, in England, in Iceland and in uh, Manhattan. Oh, there's a, quite a few places. Many homes. <laughs> Many homes. And what is the place where you would say this is the most hearty place then? Um, the internet. The internet. So the was the fact is that Vespertini is, is then a, um, a very global record and a very modern record in, in the way of its production. And yeah, the approach. I think the laptop has, has uh, brought the excitement back to the home, you know, like uh, people have the most exciting computer games at home now yeah. and they have uh, the most uh, access to all the eccentric uh, things that they would like most in their home. So and also uh, <clears throat> I think it's uh, very exciting with, with uh, Napster and downloading. So for example, I, I chose the musical instruments for this album. Only the ones that download, very pretty, uh -huh. like like harp, and yeah. music box, and Celeste. Once they've been downloaded, they're very very pretty. Right. And and also uh, <clears throat> the human voice. When when you whisper more, it sounds uh, very pretty when it's gone through an upstair. Huh. Well, and then that... the micro beats of the home. Like the rhythms, uh, if you if you like knock a, 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 a chair with a spoon or, or a toaster or you shuffle cards or all the, all the beats on this record are done by things around the house. That's nice. It's also a very childlike approach of creating music, like see where the noise comes from, make some noise, do some rhythms, yeah. record it. Yeah, it's about that magic is everywhere. It, it's a state of mind. It doesn't mean what uh, tool you use. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Yeah, um, good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, Wir haben gehört, sie wurde viel auf dem Laptop gemacht und trotzdem ist es natürlich eine Gefühlssache. Home is where the heart is. Da kamen wir dann überein und wo das Laptop ist natürlich. Und ähm, jetzt mal die Frage so, ähm, nach dem, was man zuletzt von Björk gesehen hatte, eben diesen Film, was denn jetzt ein ganz anderer Ansatz wieder Kunst zu schaffen? Now, um, the last 
thing you've done and, and it was publicly discussed and received was uh, the movie you have done with Lars von Trier, Dancer in the Dark. Um, now, when you compare working as an actress, which I think you said you will never do again, mm -hmm. and uh, now creating this record, um, is there two different things that you um, have inside you that are responsible for either acting or creating music? Yeah, I think uh, the difference between doing what you love to do and things that you're not that excited about are very extreme. Because in both jobs, you, you have to really go work really hard. Like if you play music like me, I've done tours that take many years. And you are um, on a mission separate from everything you love, but you don't notice it because uh, you're doing what you love to do. And then you make the same effort for film. Um, it's just very uh, strange. I think I'm ready to die for a song any day, but I'm um, probably not ready to die for a film. Now, um, Vespertin, I think, is a very emotional record, although you said it's composed on a laptop where most people would think that this is far from having emotions, like seeing just the technical side of a tool like that. But, but then again, um, it's full of emotions. Um, how come? Like, is it that you can separate, like, techniques and, and your emotions? Um. Well, I've never understood why technology is supposed to be the enemy of feelings. Uh, it's got nothing to do with each other. It's, it's uh, like we have this camera here in front of us, and uh, you could cry now, and then you could be euphoric, mm. and then uh, the next minute you could be hilariously funny and do a slapstick, slapstick stunt. It, you can be very emotional with technology, you know. It's, it's, uh, you, I've always said you cannot blame technology if there is not soul in music. It's not technology's role to bring soul. It's the human See. human's role. Right. But it's it's always been uh, with with uh, uh, the human race. Uh, a pencil mm -hmm. to write a novel. Yeah. A pencil is a very cold thing, but a novel can still be emotional. But uh, the same with computer. It's just like a pencil. It depends what you do with it. See, sounds very logical. Yeah. Now, speaking about emotions, so the next video is for All is Full of Love, directed by Chris Cunningham. Yep. Um, great video. Thank you. Kommt yes. jetzt. Um, speaking about Chris Cunningham, I just revealed that we are going to see another video that he directed. But it's a surprise. Which one? Okay. Now, we have a short ad break coming up. Jetzt gibt es eine kurze Pause, Rechen von ihr. Und das ist äh, ja nicht so ganz klar. Wo ist sie denn im Moment? Wir haben festgestellt, da wo das Herzchen und der Computer ist. Aber vielleicht gibt es ja tatsächlich sowas wie eine feste Bleibe. Now, um, I just announced before that we are going to talk about your home. Mm -hmm. And now we know that your home is where the heart and the laptop is. But nevertheless, is there uh, a favorite place where you stay? Now, your four walls, is it, is it Iceland or is it partly London? Uh, I am partly in Iceland and partly in Manhattan now. Oh, yeah, that's new. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How come that you that you went to Manhattan? Is that a place you always liked? I don't know. <laughs> Just coincidence? Well, no, it isn't. I remember when I first came there, I was so excited and I knew I would always move there, but I didn't realize it would be so early. Uh -huh. And uh, then I was going to move there maybe in '97. Or eight, I can't remember. And then I decided to do the film. So I guess I moved there now. Oh, so and that being said, um, your son has he moved with you to Man to Manhattan? No, this is the first time he doesn't live with me. Oh, he is living with his father. They are growing a beard together. Right. Uh huh. So um, when that occurred, um, that you moved to Manhattan, um, did that have any any major influence on the record then? I mean, uh, privately and musically? I guess it sort of more operated as a no man's land. You know, it, it was a very, uh, like a little oasis. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not English, it was not Icelandic, it was not Danish. And um, it, it, I guess that's kind of more how it affected. It was sort of a piece to do what you want to do without being attached to the surroundings. I guess Manhattan is obviously very good in letting people be as eccentric as they want and do whatever mm -hmm. they want 
without uh, anybody bothering. Everybody minds their own business there. And, and it's sort of a, in a way, it's sort of a, 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 a sort of a, a rescue camp mm -hmm. for uh, uh, eccentrics sometimes. Do you think that uh, living in Europe um, brought too much exposure for you with you, like just by being on the street and being recognized? I think there's a choice. There was definitely a choice in my life around 96 if I wanted to be a full-time celebrity or if I wanted to be make music. Right, I remember. And I uh, moved to uh, Spain mm -hmm. to make music. But I don't think being a celebrity is bad. I think, but I think it's a full-time job, and it invades your soul, and, and uh, it's sort of a bit like being Mother Teresa, because you sacrifice <laughs> your uh, personal life for the public, yeah. and, and it's something that's very needed by the public, otherwise it wouldn't exist. And I think it's as important as being a doctor or a, or a taxi driver, or it's a very important role in society. But I th I've got offered it, and I decided to rather stay a, a musician. So it's not that you have the wish of being invisible or being camouflaged at times? No, I think, I think that's a cliché. I, th I think uh, uh, there's a lot of unwritten contracts mm -hmm. you sign through life. And you agree to do things and you agree not to do things. And you have to be responsible for uh, your life and what you do. And, and, and I'm now uh, doing music, which is my favorite. So it couldn't really be better. Now, coming up in the show is uh, music by somebody else, Destiny's Child. Yeah. Great girls. They rescued pop, didn't they? In a way, they did, yeah. For me, in a way. Say My Name is the title of the song. Coming up. Destiny's Child, Say My Name. I come to this because at the Oscar ja Björks Outfit ein viel diskutiertes war und da habe ich mich gefragt so interessiert das eigentlich jemand also sie selbst in erster Linie now um, there's one thing I remember when uh, the Academy Academy Awards took place in Los Angeles then um, the way you dressed was one of the most discussed topics on the evening and uh, the question is do you actually care what people say about what you're wearing not really I think it's a decision I made when I was five. Five? Yeah. Like having your own style and not care about... Well, maybe not same. about clothes, but it's two ways. Either you do things like uh, what people want you to do, what you should do, like the uh, moral uh, majority, <laughs> mm -hmm. or you don't. <laughs> you do what you want to do. So that was the decision in general, that you don't care, you do whatever you like. Well. Of course I care. I think it would be cruel not to care, but uh, I think it's uh, more important that I, I do what I want. Mm -hmm. I think in the long run I can be a more generous person if I, if I do what I want. What do you think is um, the biggest misconception about Björk, or the one you really don't like? What people think about you? Um, I, do, I don't know. Um, it's hard for me to see, for example, from the outside what people think of me. Uh -huh. You know, I hear a lot of things, but it's very distorted, and yeah. and and uh, and I, I also I, I I make uh, I don't take it in as well because of protection. I I have my group of friends and and uh, we have a, a good time, you know. Mm -hmm. So that means that um, having friends is basically. Um, your net when, when it comes to, to falling just because everything is becoming too much? Friends are the most important thing then. Yeah, that's obvious, no? For everyone, no? Well, for, for some people, like, especially in this business, it's like they're the most important thing to themselves. Which is mm -hmm. bad in a way, and it's sad. But we're all a little bit selfish too, though, right? Well, yeah. You are but a little bit, no? Sometimes. Well, I, I try I to am. remember where I'm coming from and, and the people I care about. Yeah. Yeah, I do too, for sure. I, I, I have most of my friends I've had since I was a child or a teenager from Iceland. Yeah, so do I. I, mean, I meet on a regular basis, yeah, for sure.
Right, you, you meet a lot of false friends in this business, at least. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel lucky. You do? In my job, yeah. Yeah, you're very well respected. And uh, critics have always, have always been nice, and so, well, you can be happy. Yeah, I met good people in my work. I know. That are my you, friends. They become, they became all your friends, yeah, and that's good. Yeah. Like, it wasn't just a business thing going on here. Yeah. Maybe Germany is different. Hmm. I'm <laughs> teasing you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might think at least. <laughs> I can appreciate that. I'm sorry. I know what you mean. <laughs> well, I'm a cold-blooded German. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. No, I'm not. I'm half Czech. I'm playing hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm playing it back. <laughs> All right, then. Yes, the industry is evil. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> so, better save my ass and play a video now. <laughs> How about yoga? Okay. Well, okay, it's coming. Um, this is an insider. Now, I, I just admitted that I was uh, becoming a little insecure and that I had sweat drips on my forehead and becoming red-faced, but it's all because of Boney M. Yeah. Yeah, I have this secret obsession, too. Yeah, secret obsession. And... I have the best of Boney M. They had did, like, a, a remix album. Really? It was really good. It's like non-stop Pony M from beginning. Oh, in point. the mix? Yeah. Oh, I know that record. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I got a signed copy from all of them. Why did you meet them? They, they, we shared the label, French label. So the French record company got it for me. Oh, I'm envious. It, I save it in Iceland. It's, I keep it there so I don't lose it in my travels. You should. Oh, the hand signed Pony M platte. Donnerwetter. Ja, also ähm, zurück zu dem, was ich eigentlich gerade fragen wollte, habe ich natürlich vergessen. Ganz aus dem Konzept jetzt, aber macht ja nichts. Es geht um äh, Musik und um, um, Emotionen in erster Linie. <lacht> no, I'm becoming really shy now. It's okay. It's Friday. We're putting some emotion in MTV. It's good. Yeah. Anyway, I, want to, I wanted to talk about emotions and music. Mm -hmm. um, since I've mentioned that your record, your new record is very emotional. And, uh, and then again, um, I have the feeling that it's harder and harder to do an emotional record. And I have the feeling that a lot of music that is out there um, consists of, of recycled emotions in a way that were created in, in the 70s or 80s or whenever. Mm -hmm. Do you have that impression too? Well, I have this theory that, um, which might not be true, but it's my own imaginative theory that um, it's always kind of been the same little bit, like say thousand year ago or two thousand year ago or one thousand year from now, that it's uh, only a certain percentage uh, that have the courage to be emotional. And then there's uh, all the other percentage that are repeating um, what was done before. Um, but that's, that's uh, I think that's very natural. I think we are grateful that in a certain way people uh, are conservative and like tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, certain old ideas are good, like that chairs have four legs. It's a good idea. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd fall over. Yeah, very practical. Yeah, and 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 uh, so, but but otherwise, uh, but but I think things like say, for example, the the, the extreme opposite um, is is maybe the, the feelings. You know, we can only have the feelings we have uh, right now. You know, and and and. Uh, uh, and I, I think it's very important that the spontaneity of, of that. Right. And for me, that's that's my that's my kick in life, you know. I guess. We have um, now. There's a song on your new record called "Sun in My Mouth," yeah. and um, the words to it are a poem by E. Cummings. Yeah. Um, is is he somebody you have been um, you have read a lot of stuff of and uh, you like? Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Where do you see uh, a connection between his poems and the music you, you create? Um, it's hard to say sometimes why you pick something up and why you're obsessed with it, but it's very important to follow it because usually two or three years later you figure out why and then it's too late because you're not in that emotional place anymore. 
So uh, I think it has got something to do with his faith in uh, quiet ecstasy mm -hmm. and, and sort of being very, very humble, but completely uh, enormous. I think it's a very rare, usually when people are that, about that sort of obsessed with climax, as most of his poems are, like so completely ecstatic and mm -hmm. euphoric, they usually go a little bit arrogant or pompous or like, 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 uh, but he never, he's always humble. So I guess in this album, I was very focused on that to reach like a very, very grand sound, especially with the choirs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of song with big choirs, but to always, always, always be humble. And, and it's, it's usually these two things are opposite in life. Yeah. Um, but I, I was very interested, fascinated by this emotional state. So, Spielplatte ja quasi da und jetzt geht es auch ein bisschen darum, wann können wir sie denn live sehen und so weiter und so fort. Und überhaupt, ähm, sie hat mir was gesagt in einem Interview, warum sie überhaupt Platten macht oder einer der Hauptgründe. Und das ist äh, die Suche nach dem perfekten Popsong. Ein Song, den Leute von drei bis 90 hören könnten und prima finden. Ähm, now, I've, I've read one thing about you. Sunday, you mentioned that uh, you are on, you're searching the perfect pop song, searching to write the perfect pop song, a song that people age three and age 90 can listen to and appreciate it. Um, are you still like uh, hunting for, for that song? I mean, there's another couple of songs on, on your new record where I would say, okay, go for it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. But, but I'm very aware of it's a long way to go, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, I always had these romantic ideas about uniting different worlds, um, like uniting nature and techno. It doesn't necessarily have to be opposite. Yeah. It can be very organic with technological uh, instruments. Uh, uniting uh, urban and rural, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uniting, um, uh, so-called serious music and folk music. Mm -hmm. I, I, I quite liked like a uh, hundred years ago when, uh, when uh, there were people like Eric Satie, for example, uh, or uh, Ravel, uh, that sort of made both serious music and also folk, dealt with folk music. And uh, it, it's, not, it's not very often in human history that, that uh, this gap has been so big, you know, between mm -hmm. the two. Uh, yeah, so, so, so uh, one, one of it is, and also I'm very interested in uniting abstract, because I think a lot, big chunk of our lives are, are pretty abstract, mm -hmm. if you like it or not, you know. The noises we hear and, 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 and uh, air conditioning and, and, uh, and sentences and trying to keep up a conversation with people when we don't have a clue what they're talking about yeah. and, and all these things. And, and then also, of course, the opposite, which is the, the narrative, or, or uh, the, the, and obviously being coming from a country which is obsessed with uh, storytelling, I'm, I'm very obsessed with, with uh, uh, the narrative or the pop song, the mm -hmm. perfect pop song, put in three minutes, where is eye contact in every microsecond, you know? But it uh. still doesn't sacrifice the abstract. I think it's important. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm still looking. But I have st uh, a long way to go. So you are Hunter for the perfect pop song and for Unity. And Hunter is the last video also. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank Jörg. you. Then uh, I think we see you in the fall playing yeah. shows here. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be uh, singing uh, with a harp mm -hmm. and laptops and a choir. And I'm gonna sing without a microphone. Oh, Acoustic because the microphone takes away too, too much of your voice? Yeah, and also I wanted to make it cozy. That sounds nice. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Okay. And see you in the fall then. Okay. Das war In Touch für heute, ein letztes Video von Björk, Hunter. Und dann sehen wir sie im Herbst auf deutschen Bühnen. Auf Wiedersehen.